and welcome on into another episode of NASCAR Coast to Coast presented by Flow Racing. As always, from the Concord, North Carolina studios, my name is Chris Wilner. He is back from the dead. Kyle Ricky, hopefully you're feeling better. Uh, they missed you. I mean, we had calls in left and right saying, where is Kyle Ricky? Where is Kyle Ricky? We're glad to see you that you are alive and well out there in Killingly, Connecticut. Kyle, uh, you missed a lot last week, by the way, but we had tried to have some fun, but we didn't have enough fun without you. So we're glad you're back. I watched a good show. Um, I was bummed not to be here. Uh, so I don't know, something hit me overnight, Monday into Tuesday. Uh, well, obviously, we filmed this show every uh, every Tuesday afternoon, and uh, it, it knocked me out for a couple of days. We're back. Uh, took the weekend, for the most part, to recoup, and uh, we're good to go. But uh, yeah, missed being here. Well, and you come back, too, with a brand new phone and that sparkling HD resolution. I mean, we just got upgraded, didn't we? You know, you sit around for days. I say days and days. It was like three days. We just sit around and you think. And it's like, you know, I just, I, you, you get, you build that motivation to go do something that you've been wanting to do for, I don't know, for me, like two years. I've needed a new phone. So I went out and, uh, you know, got a new phone, bit the bullet and, and, and got it. And here we are in, in HD you know, yeah. Galaxy well, welcome, 22 welcome to the lead world, lab, whatever. Kyle. Yeah, welcome Thank to the you. lead lab here on uh, Smart. Appreciate Games. it. Very happy for you. Uh, we got a great show for you coming up. Obviously, we're going to go through our top seven finishers of the week. We have a little debate segment as well coming up in segment number three. But we also have Justin Bonsignor picked up his second win of the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour Series this past weekend at Manadnock. And I tell you what, he's slowly creeping up the point standings after a tumultuous start to the season for the three-time tour champion. So we'll pick his brain a little bit, see what he thought about last weekend and what's to come at Riverhead this weekend. But first, it's time to celebrate our winners, our Coast to Coast top seven of the week from this past weekend in racing. Plenty to watch. I'm sure Kyle did on his sick bed there watching Flow Racing over the weekend. Uh, we'll start, Kyle, where we usually do with the Arc Menard Series and Mr. East took it to the National Stars. That is Sammy Smith, a dramatic Late race pass of Daniel Dye, who had issues. Sammy Smith gets his first Arkham Menard Series win. Uh, certainly a rising star in the sport of uh, not only short track racing, but NASCAR here in the future. Great race at the Berlin Raceway, uh, as it always is. Great crowd, great weather. They had it all going for him. Uh, Sammy Smith had uh, a nice runner-up spot going for him most of that event. And then poor Daniel Dye uh, led, what, a hundred and... 92 laps or something like that yeah. to open the event and uh it, mechanical issues i think it was the engine that that went sour on him in the closing laps and it allowed sammy to to make the pass and claim the win just going to further prove that it's never over until the checkered flag flies it certainly is it and you know daniel dies again stuck wondering what could have been i mean i think at this point he's had a couple races where it just seems something goes on late in the race and possibly could have not one but two wins on the season. So Daniel will have to wait another week and uh, to try again for another win. But for Sammy, you know, take him any way that you can get him. And for certainly, I think this uh, not only signif signifies that he's here to stay and here's he to, he's here to play for not only another East Championship, but uh, hopefully, you know, years to come as he gets older on the national schedule as well. So congratulations to Sammy. Justin Bonson, yours are number two, Kyle. And uh, we got him on the show, and it was a guy that plenty of people maybe counted out for a championship this year. Certainly not out of it yet, but what a way to bounce back. Yeah, with a win at the Duel at the Dog 200 at the Monadnock Speedway, a high-banked, tight quarter mile at the Manad up in uh, Winchester, New Hampshire, the Monadnock uh, Speedway, always a great facility for the Modifieds. And what a finish. Uh, second place for the final uh, run of that race for, for most of the laps. And then uh, Matt Hirschman hit lap traffic, including J.B. Fortin. Those two have a history. They came together, uh, and it opened the, the door for Justin Bonsignor to dive to the inside, pass them both, and go on to lead the final four laps en route to the, uh, his second one of the season. And a pretty heated interview for Matt Hirschman. I'm certain that that story is not going to go away, especially as we talk about what the races are to come. And sure, J.B. will be out there on the racetrack next time Matt is, and we'll have to see what happens when those two get next to each other on the racetrack. They're back in action again on Saturday. We'll have that for you coming up on the calendar. Kyle, who we got for Coast to Coast number three on our top seven? SRX opened up their uh, season this past weekend at the Five Flag Speedway, season number two, uh, the first of six consecutive short track Saturday nights. And it uh, was 
Mr. Spider-Man himself, Bailey O'Castro Nevis, climbing the fence at Five Flags, picking up his very first SRX win. One of the great personalities. I was able to work the very first SRX event last year and and interviewing Elio on the front stretch was an amazing experience just based on the crowd reaction alone. Uh, the interview was pretty darn good as well. And uh, he put it to him Saturday night, picking up the race win over the hometown hero who led a lot of the first few laps of that feature event, Bubba Pollard. Yeah, Bubba certainly, I think, made a statement again for all of the short track nation that gets the opportunity. You know, each one of these racetracks that SRX runs, they've got the local hometown hero, the short track ringer. And I think Bubba really put everybody on notice that he's got the talent. So maybe hopefully on a national stage on CBS, he was able to turn some heads and uh, hopefully that turns into an opportunity, something down the road. But speaking of opportunities, first of all, not only did Elia win on an 11th hour deal that came with a text, yeah the SRX officials at 9.30 Central Time the night before saying, do you have a car? They did. They wrapped it. He came up uh, uh, the next morning for the race and, and went out and went on to win. But during that conversation, uh, the CEO of SRX, Donald Hawk, said, you know what? You win, Elio, because you're not going to run full time with us. I'll find you a NASCAR ride. Well, guess what? The deal gets to be put to the test. Don, he's going to have a ride. I believe he said at Daytona next yep. year is going to be the goal. So Elio Castroneves behind the wheel of a cup car. I think everyone's been waiting for it uh, for years now, really. I mean, the legend of Elio Castroneves spans back to the early 2000s with his IndyCar career. So let's see what Elio can do behind the wheel of a cup car. I'm certainly excited uh, for him to do that at Daytona. And he'll be one of the most veteran drivers out there, one of the oldest drivers out there. He's well into his 40s. Uh, A lot of these NASCAR Cup Series drivers that we talk about week in and week out, Late 20s, early 30s, maybe uh, for for most of them that have found success this year outside of, say, a a Kevin Harvick or a Kyle Busch. Um, And and Elio is going to be, I think, what, 45 or 46 uh, by next year. So one of the older guys, but one of the great personalities. And I can't wait to see him on the racetrack, uh, hopefully Daytona next February. Just crazy with Elliot. It's like fine wine. Just gets better with age. It looks like he's Benjamin Button getting younger as he gets older. It's absolutely insane. So Elio Cashnevis. Our Coast to Coast top th- top seven, number three. Number four, we're going to go with Casey Johnson, Kyle. I watched this, the highlights of the Arca Midwest Series at the Milwaukee Mile, one of my favorite short tracks uh, back when the open wheel cars used to run there with USAC back in the day. Uh, photo finish with William Swalich, who we had on the show here last week with Steve Post. 0.032 seconds at the line. I mean, that's like maybe a finger uh car length distance there at the finish of that arca menards or arca west or arca midwest series excuse me and it was on father's day he had his three girls there in victory lane uh what a special special win uh for that man casey johnson and certainly it's uh fitting to be on father's day and to have it come down to a photo finish yeah and he's done so well in that series and in what was also good to see a good field 27 cars took the green flag at the famed milwaukee mile in wisconsin a track that I've had the privilege to call races at over the years when when NASCAR raced there. Great facility, good field. Then it allows Casey also to open up his points lead in that series over Luke Fenhaus as they head into the summer months. So uh, congratulations to Casey on uh, winning a thriller over the weekend at one of the greatest uh, tracks in the country in the Milwaukee Mile. All right, Coast Coast Top 7, number 5, Kyle, another ARCA k and Pro Series graduate finding victory lane in the National Series. Getting it done on the dirt on Saturday night at the Knoxville Raceway in Iowa, the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series second visit to that racetrack, and he did it for the family team. And I think it surprised a lot of people that uh, one he, he has hasn't really driven much, I don't think at all, for DGR, um, and two he's never won obviously for Dad, and uh, for it to happen on Father's Day weekend. Pretty special, uh, a great race. I think a much better race this second time around than what we saw a year ago. A lot of options for the truckers to to get around there. Great track prep. And uh, it was nice seeing Todd Gilliland back in victory lane after a what has been a pretty rough cup season for him in his uh, rookie season on that level. Absolutely. I think it was refreshing for him to find the yeah. success, to do it with dad. But, you know, it was really interesting. You kind of mentioned it too. That 17 truck has pretty much could possibly have three wins at this point. Ryan Priest would probably be responsible for at least a couple of them. Uh, Things didn't pan out the way they did for that truck. So I know for David himself, it was just a breath of fresh air to finally have something go his way, but even better to have his son do it uh, there at Knoxville. Pretty special for a guy who also doesn't have a lot of dirt experience. Todd Gillen certainly looked like a veteran out there at Knoxville. All right, Coast to Coast top seven, number six of the week. 
Mike Looney. How about this? At Motor Mile Speedway, doubleheader, he sweeps it. I think that's five total wins on the year for Mike out at Motor Mile. And he's trying to get another track championship here in 2022. Certainly well on his way. A dominating effort for Mike. Another name that's synonymous with short track racing up there near Motor Mile. Congratulations to Mike. Yeah, we've had him on the show several times over the years. Always, uh, you know, running for national championship. He won the race in Martinsville a couple of years ago. He's got those Virginia short tracks uh, figured out. So a great night of racing there uh, at Motor Mile in an event that saw the Kiss Army Band perform a couple of times in between the features. It was fun to follow along throughout the night and then see a lot of the tracks, Facebook posts. Uh, you have a feature winner, and then you have a couple of shots of the band on the front straightaway. Uh, nice to see them mixing it up. Uh, some Something different, which is nice to see as well in between those, those two wins for Mike Looney on Saturday. Yeah, absolutely. I love when racetracks get creative with what they do as far as the, the entertainment value of race weekends. It's certainly fun to watch. Congratulations to Mike. All right, white flag is out. Coast to Coast top seven, number seven winner of the week. Kyle, who we got? Hey, here's a name for you. Yeah. Um, one that we haven't heard much of. Well, I guess we have because he was on the Dale Jr. Download a couple of weeks ago. But Jeremy Mayfield uh, sweeping the Grand National Super Series events at Franklin County, holding off uh, A.J. Hickerson uh, for not one but two features out there. So uh, Jeremy uh, back in victory lane at the short track level. Uh, nice to see him, uh, one, enjoying himself again on the racetrack, and, and two, uh, finding success uh, pretty quick. For sure. Absolutely. Congratulations to all of our top seven winners, as well as everybody who's picked up a checkered flag over the course of last week's crazy racing all across the United States. That leaves us time for our shout outs of the week. Those that certainly earned an honorable mention. I'm going to start first with Jace Hansen. The young driver won his first ever Spears Southwest Tour race over the weekend in seven years. He's been trying, so he's not a youngster by any means. Certainly has been a part of the series for many years, but for seven years he's waited. He gets his first Spears Southwest Tour race of the win at uh, Kern County Speedway. Again, one of the more popular uh, racetracks out there on the West Coast out of Bakersfield, California. A little bit of a bump and run, though. He kind of ruffled some feathers, especially with Buddy Shepard, who's one of the local favorites out there in Bakersfield. So some of the fans didn't really uh, like that too much. But anytime there's a first-time winner, especially for $10,000, uh, you got to congratulate him. So, Jace Hansen, way to go getting your first ever uh, Spear Southwest Tour win in seven years of trying. Kyle, who's your shout out of the week? How about uh, we keep it up here in New England? One of my modified boys, uh, Mike Christopher Jr., started the week last week uh, in a tour type modified event on Wednesday night, picking up a checkered flag for Tommy Baldwin Racing at the Thompson Speedway here in Connecticut. Uh, had a, another consistent good run 48 hours later at the Stafford Motor Speedway in an SK modified. And then on Saturday, was supposed to be a crew member for Tommy Baldwin Racing at the Monadnock Speedway for Jimmy Blewett. Uh, when that race was rained out, Jimmy could not race on Sunday. Mike jumped in the seat, had to start last, I believe 27th or 28th in the field, and uh, quickly made his way up and into the top 10, finishing the race mid-pack. But overall, a, a very successful weekend for Mike Christopher Jr., uh, obviously a second-generation driver, nephew to the late, great Ted Christopher. And continuing to keep that Christopher name on the map up here in New England. Absolutely. What a story. What a super sub, too, as well, to get yeah. that late opportunity. And obviously for Jimmy, I mean, we wish he could race. I mean, I know he had to miss a few weeks uh, for his daughter's health. He comes back, and then unfortunately the rain out with his schedule wasn't able to compete, but certainly heck of a job for Mike Christopher Jr. All right, well, speaking of the ground pounders, the Modifieds, well, we've got their winner from Manatnock Speedway on the line coming up next. That is Justin Bonsignor, the three-time tour champ. Says he's ready to go for another title, but he's got some work to do. Still six in the points, but that win helping him a ton. He's on the other side of the break on NASCAR Coast to Coast, presented by Flow Racing. You're watching NASCAR Coast to Coast, presented by Flow Racing, the new home of NASCAR Roots. Catch the Wheel and Modified Tour, Arc Menard Series, Pinties, and NASCAR Weekly Tour Races all season long on flowracing.com. Subscribe today. And joining us now on NASCAR Coast to Coast, presented by Flow Racing via Zoom, it is the big winner from Monadnock Speedway in the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour. Second win of the season for Mr. Justin Bonsinger. Congratulations. You got the stellar trophy there over your shoulder showing off for all of us here at home. Uh, let's just get right to it when the race itself. Uh, you had to track down Matt Hirschman and then absolute chaos ensued for the leader. And then you just snuck right there through on the bottom. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good sometimes, but you were good there at the end. Walk me through those final that final stretch run at the end. 
Yeah, we were running third there with about 50 to go. Uh, Caution comes out, I think 20 or 30 to go, got into second. And, um, you know, we were we were neck and neck with Matt. Um, you know, it was going to be tough to get by him. He's obviously one of the best uh, best at this game. And our cars were pretty even. We were kind of playing cat and mouse with each other. And then uh, I was I was right there about a car length or two back, with whatever it was, three or four to go. And, uh, you know, we came off a two. And, and I thought the lap car was going to let us both go to the outside and, and definitely didn't. And when when it all kind of clicked in my head what was, what was taking place, I – yeah, I just tugged on the wheel as hard as I could to get to the bottom, get to the apron and uh, just stood in the throttle and tried to clear both of them off of four there, three wide. And, you know, from there, just, uh, you know, make two more, two more smooth laps and get away from everybody. It was uh, definitely chaotic. Not the, not the way you want to win a race, um, but, you know, we, we put ourselves in position all day long. And, um, you know, like you said, you'd rather be lucky than good. As we talked earlier in the show, that lap card, J.B. Fortin, and has a history with with uh, Matt on the racetrack. Until that point, though, Justin, were you satisfied and OK with uh, with the second place finish? Yeah, for sure. You know, we've we've had quite the struggle uh, through the month of May. We uh, had a couple of mechanical issues and just didn't run very good at, at any of the races, uh, the last three races. So um, the way the season's played out, uh, we were, we were going to be happy to get out of there with a, with a top three finish and, and have a good day and just try and build some momentum off of that. But, uh, you know, when it's when it's presented an opportunity, when an opportunity is presented like such, you just got to pounce on it and uh, you know, we, like I said, we kept ourselves in position all day and we were really close and uh, you got to be close enough to, to take take uh, those those chances. So uh, it worked out well for us. It's unfortunate, uh, you know, kind of the black cloud it puts on on the series and racing. But, uh, you know, it is what it is from our standpoint. We'll just have to uh, move on from it. And I've always been curious because, you know, we talked to Bubba Pollard about this earlier in the season. Obviously, you're somebody who's been in this series for quite a long time. Where is the respect level when it comes to lap traffic? Have you felt like you've had any issues before in the past? Obviously, this was a little bit more personal between JB, but at the same time, leading a race, you know, the many times you've had before, have you ever run into any issues like that? Where's the state of kind of that respect level? Yeah, I mean, it's tough on the little short tracks that we race on. Um, you know, lap traffic always always is is kind of a, a tough thing to, to navigate and you have to kind of pick and choose your battles and, and anticipate what somebody, what move they might make. And, and you kind of learn those things as you race with the same guys each and every week. Uh, but um, obviously, like you said, that was a different, uh, different level of things. And it's not something you typically deal with. Um, I always feel from both sides of things, the leaders could be respectful of the lap cars and vice versa. And, and sometimes it's not, a, it's not that easy. And sometimes you know, these racetracks we race on are just so, so small and so tough, but, um, you know, it's just something you got to be conscious of and, and try and anticipate, you know, a couple corners or, or at least a corner or straight away in advance of, you know, what you think that person might do and, and how you're going to not mess yourself up and lose any time, whether it's just, you know, completing laps or to try and make a pass in, in the situation we were in the other day. So, um, it's tough. Everybody's out there trying to run their own race. And, um, you know, especially when guys are trying to stay on the lead lap late in a race, you don't expect them to just, you know, move over for you. But, um, you know, the way I look at it, I, I got lapped a few times during the month of May and, um, you know, I just try and get out of the way as quick as possible because I know when the shoe's on the other foot, I, I hope the, you know, the same thing. So, um, but it's just part of racing on every, every level. And, uh, it's just something you got to become good at is, is navigating lap traffic. And that might be the answer to my next question is what makes you so good at these quarter mile racetracks? I mean, four wins now at Monadnock, eight wins at a track we're going to this week at your home track, Riverhead. Uh, I mean, I grew up racing at Riverhead, so that, um, that I think just is part of it. You know, a lot of laps on little short tracks and, um, you know, Ryan Stone brings really good race cars each and, each and every week for us as well, which is always a good thing because, you know, when the car is not right, you know, no matter how many wins you have at a place, you're, you're not going to, you're not going to be in contention, but, um, you know, we've, uh, we just got a lot of experience and a lot of, a lot of seat time at these places and just real, really confident when we go to these places as well. So, um, you know, we were looking forward to getting back to Monadnock, even though we had a bad stretch there, we knew we could go there and, and be in contention and, and have a good shot at it. I know you also mentioned to post-race about the struggles of the setup of the race car with a new tire. I mean, what are some of the things you're figuring out? Do you feel like you're figuring some things out as we get to the summer part of the season? Yeah, it's not necessarily that it's a new tire. We have been running that 500 compound right rear for a couple of years now, but not at every racetrack. And I think that's kind of been misconstrued the last couple of weeks, just Jennerstown and Monadnock. That was the first time at that particular track we've run that. And those are really uh, ex 
tough tracks for tire wear in, in general. So um, it's it's thrown us for a loop. If we had any bit of advantage at those places with the other tire, they're obviously gone now and it's up back to a level playing field. So um, I do feel we uh, we made some gains on it this weekend. I think we're we're learning as a team what adjustments we need to make to start the races, um, you know, to make sure we're, we're starting the races tight enough and and making sure the car will last for, you know, for 200 green, uh, 200 laps at these events. You're a multi-time champion of the tour. Uh, do you like at points? Uh, I know that was something that, you know, coming out of the season opener, everyone was watching Justin Bonson. You're there last in the championship standings. And, and you know, how he's going to be able to climb his way back up through. And now you're back up to six. And it's pretty tight among the top seven or so, just, what, 35, 36 points between you guys. Uh, is that something that you begin to look at here during this summer stretch? Or do you just take it one race at a time? Yeah, I mean, we've we thought we used up our one mulligan at, at Smyrna when we when we finished last, but we've then gone on and had three pretty rough races since out of the out of the six. We've had four bad ones out of six, and the other two are wins. So, um, you know, really, we're not out of it by any means. Um, you know, if if Ron or or anybody else goes on to win the championship, it's going to be because they put together a championship worthy season, and and we didn't. But um, I don't think we're out of it. I think we'll just have to. Uh, you know, try and hopefully knock off a few more wins, get as, you know, lead laps, get as many bonus points as we can each and every week and, and just hopefully have no more bad days. Um, you know, just from a racing standpoint, not even the point side of things, we just hope to have no bad days. And, you know, you want to go to the track each and every week and contend. And if we can contend, you know, in the top three or five, we'll, we'll hopefully win our fair share along the way. So um, I don't want to say we're going to worry about that. We're going to just try and win as many as we can. And, um, you know, we'll worry about the points if, if we have a shot at it late in the year. And um, at this point, we just got to try and win it each and every week to get the max bonus points. At any point of this season, especially that month of May stretch, were you worried at all? I mean, is it hard for somebody like you that expects to be where you normally typically are at the front of the field winning championships? Were you at any point concerned about this season? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess a little bit. You'd be lying if you said you didn't have some concerns. But, you know, then we go back after a few weeks off to, uh, you know, to Monadnock and we ran in the top three, like we, you know, hope and expect we should each and every week. So, um, you know, we did try some things over those stretches. We had some, you know, we had a, a mechanical issue at Riverhead, uh, had another issue at Lee and then Jennerstown, we struggled, but then ran well after our pit stop, just unfortunately we were a lap down. So um, we knew as a team that we were still, you know, really good. We just had to clean some things up. And, um, you know, when you have, you know, I think this is four straight years of a lot of success and, and luck on your side, you're bound to run into a bad stretch. And um, we've had our handful of issues since uh, towards the end of last year, whether it was on the last couple tour races or a few open shows. So uh, you're bound to hit a stretch. Hopefully we're past that now and uh, we could just uh, stay focused and, and just try and click off a few more wins. Maybe, you know, just claw our way back into it if possible, but if not, just try and just try and have the best races each and every week that you can. Riverhead coming up for you guys. Optimistic getting back there after those mechanical woes uh, that you mentioned last month. Yeah, um, you know, before the mechanical issues, we weren't really running all that great. Uh, we've kind of kind of hit a little bit of a struggle since Doug uh, started whooping up on everybody there last year. And we've kind of chased what we feel we needed in the race car. And I think we've gotten away from what we uh, should be should be doing. Um, you know, I think we've talked since the last race in May there and we have a better idea of what we should uh, we, we should look for in practice and try to work on. That's a tough little tough little quarter mile racetrack that they now spray the outside groove and sometimes the inside groove is, is fast. So it's 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 always evolving there and you never know exactly where it might be each and every race. So um, we have a pretty good game plan in place, a uh, pretty good setup. I'm hoping uh, that'll keep us towards the front. We were, we were definitely struggling before we broke last time. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll work hard in practice and try and make sure we have a good car that'll last 200 laps. It's been fun this season, just from a race fan perspective, to have the tour on flow each and every race this year. As somebody who's been a part of this series for a long time, are you feeling that excitement around this series now that it's in front of such a big audience? We're bringing in dirt fans that are used to watching the Chili Bowl and the shootout to suddenly saying, hey, I'm a modified fan now watching the tour each and every week. So how's it exciting for you as a veteran, as a, as a tour driver, to see that expansion you know, on the broadcast side, bringing in a whole new group of fans this year? Yeah, I mean, as a as a tour driver, you know, I speak for probably all of us. We all think all every driver and all the team and crew members, uh, we all think that this is the best type of racing in the country. So um, to be able to expose that now to other parts of the country and other parts of the world that 
can see how how exciting our races are how um you know involved the drivers are we would like to have fun on social media and 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 just show our personalities and i think flow is is just you know not even off and running yet with what the capabilities they'll have to to help grow our series so they've done a great job so far they do a lot of content uh during the week and, and each and you know after the races and stuff like that so I think as this progresses through, uh, you know, this season and then into the future, I think it should just only help grow the series to a bigger extent. And, you know, the financial backing that they've been able to help put into our series as well with the purse money, um, you know, hopefully can start to pay dividends as well when people see the the amount of money that we're racing for each and every week throughout the entire field. It's it's definitely the you know, highest paid modified series, you know, that there is. And, and everyone looks, you know, to the future, what's next, you know, obviously flow is huge this year for the NASCAR wheel and modified tour. And as a veteran of the tour, uh, what do you hope to see down the road? Uh, is there, you know, obviously there's always room for growth. Uh, what's that next big milestone in your eyes for the tour as far as expanding down the road? Uh, I mean, it, it's pretty good now for what you would consider a regional level series. You know, a lot of these, nearly everybody is a uh, volunteer that, that just does this on the weekend. And, um, you know, I don't know really what else more we could ask for. Um, you know, the purses continue to go up. Um, we continue to go to better, better facilities, uh, throughout the whole East coast, uh, you know, to start the season at speed weeks during at new Smyrna is, is an amazing thing. I think it's not easy financially. Um, but I think those are, those are type of events that we need to have on our schedule that put, you know, big eyes and, and large crowds, whether it be from speed, uh, from Florida itself or through flow. Um, you know, we got a lot of crown jewel events on three separate cup weekends now. Um, and you still mix in a bunch of the good short tracks throughout uh, the New England area. So, um, you know, I think as we continue to come out of the pandemic and, and people get back to normal, uh, I think things will continue to get better on all fronts. Um, you know, as long as we can continue to to keep pushing the purses and, and explain to everybody, uh, the, the other teams that these are good paying events that this, um, you know, this, this could only keep growing and get better. And, um, I just hope people continue to see that. Finally, before we let you go, uh, you know, we've kind of hit this stretch where we're going back to back weeks here. I know you're not traveling as far as like maybe what we had earlier on in the season, but what's the turnaround time for you guys at the shop, uh, just in terms of just, you know, breaking down, making sure the typical maintenance and then getting it turned around, set up for uh, Riverhead this week. Yeah, we uh, we'll run the same car again this week. Our little short track car uh, will actually run again at wall in a couple of weeks. So um it's it's definitely a little hectic for ryan and the crew and the crew guys up in connecticut to get that one car swapped over each and every week and you know go through its normal maintenance and and uh just repairing damage uh from from racing on little bull rink so uh we're we're in good shape as far as as that's concerned we got out of Manadnock pretty pretty unscathed and uh, our other two cars are actually ready for new hampshire and uh wherever the first race i think in august is maybe thompson so uh, we have our backup car that'll come to the next few races. It's already set. And then our New Hampshire car has basically been sitting since Richmond when we won. So um, Ryan does a really good job uh, along with all the crew guys that volunteer their time during the week up in Connecticut to, to uh, have a good game plan and try and stay a little bit ahead of schedule. And um, you know, they'll get, they'll get all the heavy work done this week, get the car scaled, and then we'll have at least one week off before wall. Um, and then I think after that, we're, we got a little bit of a break again. So uh, it gets tough for Ryan and I, I hate that I'm not uh, closer to be able to help, but uh, you know, they do a great job on my guys and um, you know, you try and reward them with, uh, with, with victories like we had this past weekend and it makes it all worth for worth it for them. Well, oiled machine. I like that. You got the nice schedule. you got the New Hampshire car ready to go. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, Ryan's pretty OCD, so he uh, he's he's always one step ahead of what we think we need to be. Awesome, that's what makes champions. Kyle, do you have anything else? I was just going to ask you, Happy Thompson's back on the schedule. We talk about all these bull rings uh, with Riverhead and and Mananoc and Wall coming up, but you know you had Thompson figured out there for quite some time, and they were off the schedule a year ago, and they're back now for two events here coming up later this summer. Yeah, I mean, it was uh, it was unfortunate that they came off the schedule just as it is that that Stafford is currently off the schedule. We, you know, those are our, our our bread and butter areas for fans, and you know that's where this series was built around was those couple of racetracks. So for Thompson to uh, to see the value and bring bring us back onto the schedule twice this year is is huge, and um, you know I'm excited to go there. We've run well so many times there. Um, didn't run all that well in 2020, so we're hoping to get back there and run 
run a little better and contend for some wins. Um, it's definitely one of my favorite tracks. I'd love to, uh, to add to the win total there. I think we're one away from, from Ty and Teddy on the, uh, the record there for, for uh, tour wins. So we would love to, uh, to try and pull that off and, and just keep chasing wins there. That's an amazing facility and, and uh, like, like going there a lot. Well, first things first, Riverhead this weekend. Justin, congratulations on the success this past weekend and uh, best of luck going for win number three on the year here this weekend. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you having me on. All right, that's Justin Bonson, your big winner here at Monadnock, and he's getting ready to go for number three in the season here coming up at Riverhead Saturday, 8 p.m. on Flow Racing. We're back for NASCAR Coast to Coast presented by Flow Racing after this. You're watching NASCAR Coast to Coast presented by Flow Racing, the new home of NASCAR Roots. Catch the Wheel and Modified Tour, Arc Menard Series, Pinties, and NASCAR Weekly Tour Races all season long on flowracing.com. Subscribe today. And welcome back to NASCAR Coast to Coast presented by Flow Racing. Just heard from Justin Bonsignor. Kyle, what do you think? Sixth in points, still a good chunk of races left on the schedule. Some really good tracks like Riverhead coming up for him. You think he could make one of the biggest comebacks in tour history and uh, find himself in championship contention when we get to the end of the season? Oh, God, yeah. There's plenty of races left on the schedule. And, was, and if you look at the championship standings, yeah, he is sixth in points. He has two wins. The five ahead of him ha have been consistent, but they haven't been to victory lane yet. So, uh, you know, we'll see. We'll see. It's going to be fun to watch. And we knew it was going to be fun to watch when he had his issues at New Smyrna Speedway uh, finishing last and then he had another issue. I guess it was a Richmond. So, um, yeah, it would be, uh, be fun to – it's been fun to watch him, and it will be a continued to be fun to watch him throughout the uh, summer months. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, no, I absolutely agree. And that leads us to our go or no-go segment here, a little bit of a debate topic. A couple topics for you, go or no-go on the topic. Kyle, I'll start – with uh, pretty the obvious topic, at least for me this weekend, with the NASCAR Cup Series off and the Xfinity Series off, we only had the truckers out at Knoxville plus a host of grassroots racing. Should there be more than one off weekend in NASCAR? And if, and if so, do you like the idea of maybe all three national series taking a break and giving the short trackers a weekend to celebrate? What do you think? No, I like it. Um, one weekend is tough, especially for these cup teams that are just nonstop for what, 39 out of 38 weekends, if you, you know, include the clash and you include the all-star race, I, you know, I, I, but I think at the same time, you know, the tracks have to get creative and how they promote their events that particular weekend. If all three series are off, but uh, NASCAR has to help out uh, with the promotion in the process, but absolutely. Uh, you know, you look at last Saturday, you had the truck race on, you had the modifieds on flow, you had ARCA on flow, uh, there was a there was a, just a ton of short track racing throughout the country, just regular programs on flow racing. And that's that's the case most of the weekends. But it would be cool to to have it highlighted a bit more uh, without the, the 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 national spotlight kind of taking away from the short tracks with the trucks Xfinity and Cup Series. I'd like to see it, you know, two, three, four times a year. I like, and, I, and I'm going to go with this topic as well, and strictly because I think we've seen and we've talked about it on the show, the trend of a lot of our National Series drivers coming back to the grassroots, trying to get, you know, more laps experience. I mean, William Byron, for example, yeah. five straight wins in a, in a late model. That would give those guys more opportunities to do so instead of trying to work it around their Cup Series schedule or Xfinity Series, Xfinity Series schedule on the weekends. If we already have the weekend off or the whole weekend off, that gives them more of an opportunity, more of a, a really an incentive to go out and continue to race uh, in other series. So absolutely, uh, but more so for the sake of the teams, just getting a break. And uh, it's a grueling grind, especially uh, I don't even travel all 38 weekends of the year, and I'm exhausted after every season. So I can't imagine what it's like for those folks that do it on a weekly basis. So absolutely uh, going to go with that topic. All right, topic number two, Kyle, go or no go. Should opportunities at the next level be the new standard reward for winning grassroots races, big money races, instead of it just being a high purse, should we be awarding rides in series uh, that kind of progress you up the ladder? What do you think? Oh, that's a tough one. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think, yes, we should. But unfortunately, I think we all know the business model of the sport and of the industry, you know, doesn't always allow that. But I mean, yeah, you can win if you win late model races uh, or art or in this case uh, you know arca races at the the east and west level you should be promoted to the the national level and then when you do well there you move up the trucks and xfinity and so on and so forth but unfortunately that always 
isn't the case. We have seen it with guys like William Byron, who we were just talking about a moment ago. I mean, it wasn't that long ago we had him on this show on seemingly a monthly basis, talking about winning at the Hickory Motor Speedway in a late model, um, then moved up to, to what was the K&N Pro Series East, and then did well there, uh, and then progressed up through the National Series and ultimately uh, into a cup ride, and now was contending for a championship. You want to see it. I, I get why we don't as much, um, but yeah, I think they they sh there should be some sort of a a reward for for guys that find success at different levels of the sport. Yeah, hopefully financially we can find a way to make this work. I'll say go to as well, but with the stipulation, I think th th there's a right way to do it and a wrong way to do it. I think what yep. Gateway Nationals did with Tyler Carpenter, yep. pretty reasonable example, right? Got the truck ride with Nice, so unfortunately didn't probably live up to what the expectations that many of us had as far as his performance, but still a great opportunity for Tyler to get his name out there. Uh, SRX, I think, does the best job with expanding it down to the grassroots level, saying, hey, some of these racetracks, have one of your races be an opportunity. If you can't decide who your local ringer is going to be, have a race like the Pepper Jack Twin 125s and have your, you know, with Bubba Pollard qualified there at Five Flags or Peyton Sellers, you know, being the one uh, at South Boston coming up this weekend. So, I think I like the idea. It could be very tough if you go, you know, from like, let's say a dirt midget race and say, hey, okay, you get an ARCA ride. Uh, That's okay. tough. Yeah. That's tough. Right. And so there's there's got to be a formula. There's got to be a way to do it instead of let's just, hey, let's just hand out rides left and right because that's not financially possible and uh, it certainly won't sustain itself. So that's an interesting topic. I'd like to see what happens, especially now that SRX is, do is doing it with the short track levels awarding an SRX ride, which is a national televised event mm -hmm. that is a national scaled race. I like to see kind of what happens with other series uh, moving up in the future. So I think we're, I think we're, we're pretty much uh, two for two here as far as go, but certainly the second topic, a little bit interesting. All right. Number three is dirt here to stay in NASCAR's future. We've done two years of this now. What do we think? Are well, we more are than we that. Going with, well, m more than that for sure, but at least at the cup series level, like back to back two years, we're, we're, we're back on the dirt for the trucks, obviously a lot more with Eldora than Knoxville yep. um, and, and Bristol, but, is it here to stay or are we going to, you think we're going to backtrack a little bit after what we've seen so far? Yeah, I don't think, I, I don't think it's here to stay. Um, I think it uh, was a good, was a good, I don't want to call it an experiment, but it kind of was uh, whenever you, whenever you take a, a concrete racetrack like Bristol Motor Speedway and put dirt over it, uh, you're, you're, you're experimenting and it, and it worked for years with, the local sanctioning bodies that run dirt races down in the South world of outlaws have gone in there. Uh, you know, some of the dirt modified, the IMCA modifieds have been a part of that race week that now includes NASCAR. Um, I, you know, I, I, I saw the crowd at Knoxville this past week. I don't think they obviously didn't support the event like they do the Knoxville Nationals, when there's, you know, 30,000 people there on Saturday night and the place is packed and the backstretch grandstands are, are there's not a seat to be had. Backstretch grandstands weren't even open last week. So, um, you know, I, I don't want to call it an experiment or a novelty. It was it, it was different for a few years. Uh, the trucks may stick with it, but I think long term, I don't think it's here to stay. And I don't think we'll see much more of it from what we have seen these last few years. So Kyle's a no-go. I'm going to be a go uh, on this one. I, I really think Dirt does. Now, there will definitely be some changes. I don't think Bristol will stay. Um, you know, yeah. I, I, kind of like what you mentioned at the top of, of your opinion there is it's got to be done at a dirt track. It's got to be done yeah, at a I facility agree. built yeah. for dirt track racing. And I think Knoxville, although the attendance wasn't where we saw, look at the racing we had this mm -hmm. weekend. By far, leaps and bounds over where it was on the inaugural running last year. And I think it just needs some time to get going. Dirt's going to stay. Now, as far as the Cup Series is concerned, that's a hit or miss for me. Uh, I don't think those cars are meant to be on the dirt, although they raced a lot better than the Gen 6 car did. Uh, yep. I think they the, the dirt with this Gen 7 or this next-gen car is really good. I think it's going to stay with the trucks. I think it's a really good homage to NASCAR's past and all the dirt racing that's been in its you know development as a, as a sports organization. So uh, dirt's going to stay now into what capacity? I don't know. I'm not Steve Phelps or Ben Kennedy or any of these 
guys and gals up at the top level of NASCAR, but I definitely think it should stay in terms of an homage back to NASCAR's history, and certainly the trucks are able to put on a good show on the dirt. What do you think? I agree. No, no, I think I think it's here to stay. I just don't think we're going to see much more of it. Um, I think the, the, the attention is going to shift toward road courses, street courses. Um, my big push right now is, and I, and I don't, I, I'm, I don't think it's ever going to happen, but I'm hoping it does. A Formula One NASCAR weekend on, say, the streets of Las Vegas. Wow. Kyle going big. F1 and NASCAR in Vegas. I mean, sign me up just when you say that. That sounds insane. exactly. I'd hate to be the logistical director of that whole deal. Uh, can you imagine a NASCAR Cup Series garage and then the Formula One paddock that is glitz and glamour and you wear boat shoes in the paddock and then you've got the Cup Series? I, two worlds collide in that one for sure. And what and and Vegas would be the perfect city for that to happen. I mean, world yep. different worlds collide there every day. So it's just a normal another normal day in Sin City. All right, folks, remember this conversation because if it happens, you can pinpoint to Kyle Ricky here on in in mid June of 2022, providing the idea for NASCAR and F1 at Las Vegas. That's awesome. All right, well, I appreciate it with the go or no go segment. Wrapping things up is the calendar, the go with the flow schedule of events here coming up this weekend in racing, most of which you can see on Flow Racing. Before I get to some of those particular events I've got my eyes on, Kyle, I know Stafford's racing weekly this week. You can watch it on Flow, but your phone is blowing up from your folks at Stafford saying a guy named Ryan Newman may be coming in for an open event before the SRX event out there. Yeah, that's the SRX event is scheduled for next Saturday night, July 2nd. And it was fun a year ago to have a lot of the SRX drivers on hand Friday night for for what we call an open modified race. Uh, it's an 80 lapper uh, tour type modified that compete um, around Stafford half mile. And Michael Waltrip was the grand marshal. Uh, we had, you know, Labani sitting in the grandstands. Tony Stewart was on the scaffold over in turn three. They were just hanging out. Ryan Newman said, I want to participate. So he is going to be running a modified uh, next Friday night in, in preparation of his uh, Stafford SRX debut uh, the following night. So it's going to be a big weekend of racing up, uh, up here at Stafford Speedway next weekend. Absolutely. Rocket Man going to get some laps before SRX. That is pretty cool stuff. Yeah. All right. Well, when we look at the calendar for specifics, obviously Arkham Menard series, their Sioux Chiefs Showdown series number three, they're back in action, back to back to back, and it is the Menards 250 at Elko Speedway. One of the racetracks I have not been to, I'd love to get up there, but another tricky facility up there in Minnesota, Kyle. Saturday, 9.30 Eastern time, so a little bit of a later start on Flow Racing. I can only imagine, though, Daniel Dye has that thing circled saying, I need to get to victory lane. What do you think? Oh, absolutely. Uh, especially after the, the last couple of weeks that he has had, including last weekend at uh, Berlin. This is the shortest of the short tracks that the Arkham Menard Series goes to, a, a teeny tiny uh, racetrack there in Elko, and uh, going to be fun to watch on Saturday night for the Arkham Menard Series. We mentioned SRX back-to-back -back as well as their summer season has begun for year number two. South Boston, one of the iconic short tracks in North America, and Peyton Sellers, who leads the national standings, at least going into this week, uh, as far as the NASCAR Advanced Auto Parts weekly national standings, he's the local short track hero that's going to try to do one better above a Pollard last week and take the checkered flag in front of a host of stars that include Mark Landretti, Tony Kanaan, uh, I think Michael Waltrip's in this one, Labani as well. So uh, I think so far the opening SRX race was phenomenal. I think we should see the same, uh, I would hope, at South Boston. He wins on Saturday night. Okay. That's all I'm going to say. It. He's, Boom. I mean, no one knows South Boston Speedway over the last, you know, what, 20 years yeah. better than Peyton Sellers. So um, running for another national championship. And, uh, you know, I mean, he's, yeah, he's going to do it. Okay. Kyle Ricky says, put your bets in, put those money. So if you lose money, contact Kyle Ricky. He'll get you a refund. Uh, Southern Super Series, yeah. King Parts 200. Coming up this weekend as well at Tri-County, 7 p.m. for the Southern Super Series. This is a cool one because it's also in conjunction with the Cars late, uh, Pro Late Model Tour uh, that's back in action as well. So you're going to have Cars Tour Pro Late Models plus Southern Super Series Super Lates. Uh, William Swalich, Connor, uh, Cody Connors uh, entered as well. Jake Garcia put in an entry uh, earlier this week. 
uh, should be really good. I think Southern Super Series usually brings out some of the big, big stars like Bubba Pollard uh, each and every week when they're not racing, uh, well, SRX or other major series. So excited to see that one. Kyle, Tri-County, that's a really fun racetrack as well. It is. Uh, and it's, and it's going to, I like when these sanctioning bodies come together. Uh, only the fans can win after that. I mean, the competition is great. You have all the big names there from, from different series around that region of the country and uh, should be a good show this weekend. Last one, thing on my list, I just summer shootout continues on flow. And we've talked about it with Steve Post here last week, the impact of this event, not only on young racers, but really the racing community. Some of the next stars could be found here uh, at Charlotte Motor Speedway in the uh, quarter-mile track that's built on the front straightaway using the front straightaway in the pit lane. Uh, it's often uh, one of my favorite races to watch over the course of the summer months. They get a good crowd out there, uh, so continue to support that event on Flow Racing. That's coming up Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Kyle, you, you mentioned Friday. You, uh, Stafford's in action. We got some other local tracks, though, uh, kicking things off on Flow. Yeah, about everybody. Uh, USAC Silver Crown, they're in action at Madison uh, once again this week. Saturday, Hickory Motor Speedway is in action. Berlin, uh, Jeff Striegel's had a very, very busy yeah. last couple of couple of weeks with the money in the bank. And then the Arkham and Art Series race, he's back in action for a regular show. Langley, Bowman Gray, uh, obviously you mentioned Stafford, all in action this weekend, either Friday or Saturday night. Plus Riverhead, NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour in action Saturday night, 8 p.m., Eastern time on Flow Racing, uh, their second trip of the season to the tight confines of the Riverhead Raceway on Long Island. And don't forget NASCAR in action at Nashville Super Speedway as well. So if you didn't get enough on the short track racing level, you've got the Cup Series, the Xfinity Series, and the Truck Series all in action. By the way, those Truck Series teams are thanking the good Lord that this is the last week of that eight race stretch because I can't imagine how stressful it's been for some of these teams they don't have the personnel, the budget, like the Cup Series boys and girls do. So uh, they need a break for sure. And there's a lot of crisscrossing the country. Yeah. I mean, well, we, what, a week and a half ago, they were racing at the Sonoma Raceway in California. They just had a dirt race, Knoxville, Iowa. So uh, now to National Super Speedway before they, uh, before they get a much-deserved break after two months straight on the road. And you're right, tough on the teams. Uh, a lot of travel. Um, so hopefully the teams can take advantage of it, regroup, and get ready for uh, yet another summer stretch coming up here in July. To be a lot of fun. MRN has the coverage of everything at Nashville. Flow Racing and the like have everything short track racing. Kyle, enjoy the rest of your week, my friend. Uh, I'm glad you're feeling better, and uh, have a good time out there at Stafford this weekend. I'm as well. Going to be a good time. Going to be a good couple of weeks up at the Stafford Motor Speedway. Awesome. For Kyle Ricky out there in Connecticut, my name is Chris Wilner from the Concord, North Carolina studios. Appreciate you guys tuning in on Flow Racing or NASCAR Coast to Coast presented by Flow Racing. We'll see you next week where we recap all the action from this week in short track racing and take a look at what's to come. Have a good one. If you enjoyed this episode of NASCAR Coast to Coast, be sure to subscribe to Flow Racing, the new home of NASCAR Roots, where you can catch the Wheel and Modified Tour, the Arc Menard Series, Pinties, and NASCAR Weekly Tour Races all season long on flowracing.com. Subscribe today.